In this and next few videos, we will explore the design, tuning, and optimization of PCB-based antennas, small antennas, using ANSYS HFSS. These antennas are particularly attractive for applications such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and many other IoT devices. Usually, a small um, antenna design on a small PCB uh, starts with uh, the analysis of the characteristic current modes on the chassis. And this characteristic mode analysis provides uh, valuable information in designing uh, this type of antennas and this can be uh, conveniently done in HFSS using the characteristic mode solver which you can think of uh, the IE the integral equation analog of the FEM eigenmode solver whereas the FEM eigenmode solver is ideal for um, for geometries, electrical, electrically closed systems such as waveguides, cavities, and such, uh, this characteristic mode solver uh, is ideal for electrically open systems such as antennas. As you can see here, uh, is we have a very simple uh, on the chassis of the PCB, um, and the dimensions are about uh, 15 millimeters and 50 millimeters, which can which are um, were parameterized. Now, to start with, what uh, um, the characteristic mode analysis gives us is the uh, the eigenvalues, the eigenvalues of these current modes. If the eigenvalue is positive, as is it, it is for these blue and the black lines, these modes. Um, it means that it is the mode is storing electrical energy, it's capacitive. On the other hand, if the eigenvalues are negative, that means um, the modes are more inductive, storing magnetic energy. And when the, mag uh, the magnitude of the eigenvalue is zero, that, indi that is indicative of the fact that uh, the particular mode, in this case, this mode here, is um, resonant at uh, that frequency, that certain frequency. Uh, there are other more convenient ways of looking at uh, these modal structures, and they are significance and uh, the characteristic angle of the mode. So the modal significance is derived from the eigenvalue magnitude uh, and what it means is that when the eigenvalue goes to zero, the modal significance goes to one, and that indicates that the mode is resonant and at that frequency. For example, in this case, the mode is uh, the mode one is resonant at two point about two point five six gigahertz, and this information can also be uh, verified from the characteristic angle of the mode uh, and. In this case, the, a mode is called resonant when the characteristic angle is about 180 degrees, which is, we can also see, is about 2.56, 2.57 gigahertz. So um, we can also, uh, in HFSS, look at the, the currents of this, that this mode will excite. Um, when this mode is excited, the what kind of current will be on the chassis, and we can see that this mode one I have plotted here, uh, it gives a dipole-like uh, current on the chassis, and so we'll uh, expect a dipole-like pattern as well, and which is um, actually we get a very much dipole-like pattern, and now if we also show it on the modeler window. With the structure as you can see that the modal current um, at this 2.54 gigahertz it is uh, a dipole like current and it is giving a dipole like um, radiating field now one other thing to um, see here uh, is that um, this plot so here we can see that i have parameterized one of the 
uh, dimensions. Uh, in this case, the lengthwise dimension ar along y-axis. And we can see that as we change that, the significance is changing for this mode. And uh, that means that by changing the dimensions, we'll be able to uh, tune the antenna, the antenna element that will be exciting uh, this mode on the real chassis. So next, uh, we'll look at uh, PCB with a real antenna element and look at the results and how that compare with our um, initial characteristic mode analysis results with the simplified uh, model of the PCB. But before going into that, uh, let's check um, for which value of the, the characteristic uh, of the GY dimension, the length dimension that we are getting the modal significance close to one and it seems like um, it's 50 50 millimeters so next uh, let's open uh, another model where i have already uh, placed um, an an antenna a johansson chip antenna chip type antenna on this simplified um, PCB. Again, the PCB dimension, as you can see here, it's 50 millimeters um, in length and uh, along the X direction is 15 millimeters. So we'll be uh, simulating um, this model, this simplified model, as you see this block representing the PCB and with the actual antenna. And we'll see how uh, these results uh, compare with our prediction from the characteristic mode analysis and where we need to tune and optimize. So this kind of uh, uh, boards can be used, this kind of boards can be used, for example, a uh, Bluetooth headset antenna um, that will be placed near a head model that can be used. and. For your information, HFSS provides these models that can be available from, as you can see here. So you can access that from going to component library views, component libraries, and then human body models. So let's uh, look at the setup then. So I have a lumped port excitation there are no matching circuit here just the antenna on the pcb so no matching and i have uh, my simulation frequency 2.45 gigahertz which is uh, for the bluetooth uh, frequency and a few setups here now one thing that uh, we want to perhaps do is that we also want to see um, how sensitive is um, the actual antenna tuning uh, to our uh, length dimension gy so to do that we can add an analytical derivative uh, to our simulation so then we can later uh, looking at the results we can see uh, um, and we can uh, we can get an uh, estimation of how sensitive and which way we can um, change this parameter GY to tune our antenna. So let's uh, add that in driven solution setups under the derivative tab. So I have added GY, click OK. And here we have a discrete sweep going from two to three gigahertz to capture some of the radiation patterns and radiation efficiency and um, radiation parameters and also um, okay here i have saved all the fields you can also save radiated fields only uh, for your purpose but we also want to see the currents uh, on the pcb so we'll uh, keep it to the save save fields all fields and then uh, going to the interpolating sweep, we have again um, frequency sweep from two to three gigahertz to capture the 
return loss and impedance plots. So let's go ahead and validate this design and uh, start analyze. So the simulation has completed and we can take a look at the convergence that the, the simulation converged after 14 passes to a low enough value of the of the convergence criteria. Now we'll go ahead and look at some of the results and see how that compares with our initial estimation from the CMA characteristic mode analysis. So to look at that, let's look at the return loss plot first. So with this setting, we choose the interpolating sweep for its parameter in dB and we go for new report and when we that you can see that now let's also put some markers on this plot um, so we are putting two markers at 2.4 gigahertz and another x marker at 2.5 gigahertz which are the ends of our the two pounds our frequency range so we can see that the antenna is performing fairly well but um, there is still scope of improving the performance so usually um, a return loss below uh, 10 db is preferable so there is still scope of improvement and let's also look at the smith chart plot um, plotting the impedance interpolating sweep and we can see that it is um, seems like all the frequencies are somewhat capacitive so again there is um, still some scope of improvement now going back to the geometry we can also plot the surface current magnitude on the plot and we can see clearly that this surface current plot resemblance what we expect we expected from the, uh, the CMA the characteristic mode analysis although there are differences so that's why we are getting a non-optimal uh, response from this antenna now the next thing we want to see is the, uh, the since uh, how um, the return loss this return loss changes for better or worse as we change the the length along y-axis the gy parameter um, so to to do that let's add um, another stress to this report now in at this time what we'll do is we'll add the analytic derivative of gy and tune as parameter of port one um, with respect to gy and we'll look at the db value and everything else is same then add trace and close so next uh, we have to go to hfss results so from the top menu bar hfss results and then go to tune reports and that will bring up this report tuning bar and here we can see like if we increase the length by certain amount the max and mean are 10 percent of the total length and for when we reduce the length by certain amount how the impedance uh, and the match the return loss changes so it is clear from this that um, the the length is definitely suboptimal and then uh, probably smaller length will give us a better tuning for this antenna on this board so for our next exercise we'll uh, look into that and how to optimize uh, this antenna uh,
based on this information.